welcome to the kitchen. Today we're making a maple apple pan dowdy. We are gonna use four pounds, 12 ounces of golden delicious apples, peeled, cored, and sliced a half inch thick, seven ounces granulated sugar, three ounces light brown sugar, one tablespoon plus three quarters of a teaspoon of lemon zest or 4.46 ounces, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, four ounces of butter, half a cup of maple syrup, sorry, one third, one third of a cup of water, one sheet of puff pastry, and cinnamon sugar on the top. Here we have our golden delicious apples. We've already peeled them, cored them, and sliced them, half inch wedges. Our granulated sugar, light brown sugar, lemon zest, our butter, and I gotta finish measuring out the rest of the ingredients and then we can start assembling this. Here is our four ounces of butter. We're gonna put it in a small pot and we're gonna melt the butter over medium heat and we're gonna add to it one third of a cup of water and our one third cup of maple syrup. I just put the little flour in there, it's okay. We're going to completely melt. So we're going to mix together our dry ingredients. Brown sugar, granulated sugar, the flour, our two teaspoons of cinnamon, and our lemon zest. Once we get that completely mixed together, we're then going to toss it over our apples. So you can stir this together, but I also just like to use my hand and really break up all of those bits of the lemon zest and bits of brown sugar. So I just sort of smush it together. Here are four pounds, 12 ounces of apples. Here are all of our dry ingredients smushed together and we're gonna toss them now together. Again, I just like to use my hands you don't want to, you could use your spatula or a wooden spoon, but this way it ensures that it's getting tossed and I'm not breaking the apples. You just spend all this time cutting them in a nice shape, so if you use a spoon or a wooden a spatula or a wooden spoon, you might break up your apples, whereas if you use your hands, you're a little more gentle with it and you're not gonna break them up so much. So we wanna get this sugar flavoring coating all the apples, every single one, so if you got any that are stuck together, make sure you separate them. Okay, so see how beautiful they look? And as soon as our butter and maple syrup is melted, I'm gonna pour that over this too, and then we'll put it into our baking dish. All right, so here is our melted butter, water, and maple syrup, and it's hot. So we're gonna drizzle this over the apples. I don't want to break them up, so I'm going to drizzle this slowly. Now this is hot, so please use a pot holder if you're at home. Okay, and then we'll get these coated gently. And because it's hot, I don't want to use my hands now. And we're going to put everything into this pot. Alright, so we've got our apples in our baking dish. And this is just, you know, like a lasagna pan, 13 by 9. Make sure you get all of those flavorings, maple syrup, every little bit, all that brown sugar on top of those apples. And then we're just gonna smooth it out so it's level. And the next thing we have to do is we have to cut our puff pastry. So we're gonna do that. I've got it sitting here and hopefully it's defrosted. So this is just frozen puff pastry. Pepperidge Farm, it's been sitting out long enough so that it's easy to unfold. It's still a little bit frozen, so we don't want to crack it and rip it. So just gently let it fall over. Okay. All right, I'm gonna let that sit it out a little bit longer and I'm gonna get a piece of parchment paper and my rolling pin because I want to roll this a little bit better. Our puff pastry on a piece of parchment paper and I lightly floured it. And 
we just want to roll it out and get it a little bit thinner. I like to rotate it as well. And then we're going to cut small squares out. Otherwise, your crust topping won't, won't be uh, nice and puffy. But I just did want to make them a bit bigger. So now, if you are doing this for a uh, photo shoot for a cookbook or for a patisserie, or you're selling it, you would want to make every little square perfect. But since this is just for us here in school, we're going to make it a little rough looking with those rough edges. I'm not going to worry too much about making it absolutely perfect. And I'm just cutting about one inch squares. And then what we do is that after we've cut all those one inch squares, we put them like a patchwork on top of our apples. Now that I have all of the lines cut, it's very simple when you're working with puff pastry on parchment. All I need to do is rotate the parchment paper and now I can cut all my squares this way. I love using parchment paper. Okay, and now we have our nice squares. I'll continue doing that all the way across. Now that we have them all cut, I'm simply gonna layer them on top of our apples in sort of a patchwork pattern. And I'm gonna try to cover as much as you possibly can over the whole entire top. I've gotten all the squares across the top, so there's spaces in between so you can see the apples coming out and the apple juices will escape and get all these little pieces of puff pastry nice and glossy. And we're going to put it into a 375 degree oven to a 400 degree oven and um, it'll take about 30 to 40 minutes. So this oven, uh, Everybody's oven, you need to be familiar with it. So please remember that it's done when it's done. So don't just walk away. Make sure you do check it and rotate it, okay? So I'll set the timer for 15 minutes, rotate it, and then another 15 minutes, and check and make sure it's doing well. Almost forgot, we're gonna sprinkle the top with cinnamon sugar. And so my cinnamon sugar, uh, generous sprinkling, it's the holidays. All right, my cinnamon sugar is one teaspoon of cinnamon to one cup of sugar. All right, that looks good. It also smells wonderful. All right, now we're gonna get it into the oven. All right, our apples have been in the oven for about 30 minutes, and now I'm, I've taken it out, and what I'm gonna do is gently press down and get the juices, you know those beautiful juices? We want the juices to come over and cover the puff pastry, and that will help give it a lot of flavor, and also, when it goes back in and bakes some more, it'll give it a beautiful glaze on it. I'm gonna keep doing that until I get all of these pieces of puff pastry covered with our beautiful juices. All right, so now we've gotten all of the juices over our puff pastry. We're gonna put it back in the oven for about maybe 15, 20 more minutes, and it'll be done. Here's our finished maple apple pandati just came out of the oven, it looks beautiful. We've got all these wonderful juices at the bottom, our puff pastry with cinnamon sugar. That was in for about 45 minutes. And so let's just go over the recipe again. Four pounds, 12 ounces of golden delicious apples, peeled, cored, and sliced half inch thick, seven ounces of sugar, three ounces of light brown sugar, one tablespoon and three quarters, quarter teaspoons of lemon zest, which was 0.46 ounces, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, four ounces of butter, a third of a cup of maple syrup, a third of a cup of water, one sheet of puff pastry, and one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon sugar for sprinkling at the end. So I certainly hope you will enjoy this. It was lots of fun to make, and I'm sure we're gonna enjoy eating it too. Take care, everybody. Bye.
recipe demonstrations, please click like and subscribe to Chef Victoria Loves YouTube channel and have fun in the kitchen. Thank you.